campaigns. So my name is Carrie Purse. I'm the founder of Influence Inspire Consulting. I'm here with an amazing panel and I will let them all introduce themselves. Hello. Hello. First up. Oh, I'm go ahead. My name is Marshall Williams. I'm one of the partners and the CEO of Ad Results Media. We're a, uh, a specialty advertising firm that is uh, concentrates in the audio space. Uh, I've been a long-standing radio proponent and <clears throat> have worked uh, in a, a fantastic multi-year fashion with Lisa Bailey at Sleep Number, uh, originally in radio. But as the universe of audio has changed, we pivoted more into the podcast space and have found it to be an extraordinary method for reaching uh, great audience, very responsive audience of people who follow audio influencers. So, Great. Great. I'll introduce myself. My name is Lisa Bailey. Um, I'm Vice President of Media at Sleep Number. Um, and as Marshall has said, we work together many, many, many moons. Um, and so I'm excited to be on here with him today. Um, but my sleep number, um, my sleep IQ score last night was an 85. So I that tracks my quality of sleep. So hopefully if anybody else is a sleep number fan out there, um, hope you got better than that. But um, so I'm glad, glad to be here today. Excellent. Hey, I'm Brett Senior. I just figured out this background thing and it looks my <laughs> hair look wild. Um, I'm a brand director at Procter & Gamble, specifically on Pantene North America. Um, I I'd focus on innovation that is, call it uh, the next couple of years out, as well as our responsible beauty platform and our LGBTQ uh, communications and platform. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Schaefer. I'm the group senior vice president of corporate digital innovation at Marina Mar Communications. I oversee the corporate and health digital teams in that capacity. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you figured out the background. I tried, but apparently my laptop is too old, so I can't even use it. I'm very jealous. Um, okay, so with that, let's not waste any more time and we'll dive right into the panel. So when you guys hear people say influencer marketing, you know, most folks, folks think about Instagrammers or YouTubers that partner with brands to promote their products or services. But as the discipline of influencer marketing really matures, an increasing number of marketers are looking to activate all different types of influencers, including third-party credentialers and even personality-driven media. So how do you think about this broader def definition of influence? And really, what is the potential that it unlocks for marketers? You know, I think when we look at the evolu evolution of influence and influencers, we need to look at the evolution of earned media. That just uh, a few decades ago, we had newspapers, TV stations, radio stations. And as communicators, we, we were really comfortable with that model. Uh, and now with uh, publishing and, and sharing content being so democratized, all you need is a social media handle or a GoDaddy account, and you can enter the, the media conversation on just about anything. Uh, so that means influencers have evolved as well. Uh, so what was once held within a few media outlets, then that, that uh, sort of shifted to involvement from celebrity spokespeople. And now influencers are, are uh, provide so many diverse channels and, and methods to reach either mass market audiences or sort of niche uh, subcultures based on interest. Uh, and so what, what I find really interesting is that we can classify influencers not just by their audience quantity, uh, but by the quality relative to the need of the goal. And that, that really sets an amazing uh, tone for, for everything uh, in 2021 and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would add on, you know, for us and our brand, I mean, talk about a low interest category, right? We're, so we're in a very low interest category of mattresses and we're evolving from there. Um, and we have a complex, you know, we have a complex offering and how do we talk about it? And for us, we've always defined influencers pretty broadly um, because we just are looking for those that add credibility to what we're selling, you know, getting away from Sleep Number's a gimmicky brand. And we've really been able to, through our influencers and through our level of credibility across different channels um, have been able to get away from that and really talk technology innovation and really our newest pivot to health and wellness um, through these um, qual through quality sleep. So we, um, we, we look at influencers in all different ways, but podcasts are a new one coming in, um, and over, especially over the last year that have really, really taken off for us. Yeah. Um, to expand on that, 
I think the, the influencer is, is a relatively modern term in, in the social media space. And that's most of the, the understanding of, of, of how the word is used. But, uh, influencer started out, in, in my perspective, again, audio guy, uh, as radio host who used to go on the air and say, this is a great product, you have to use it, that's wonderful. And what's happened is it's manifested from radio into the, into the audio space as a spoken word medium where you know, this, this person who has an audience, and, and Mike, you said this when we discussed earlier, you said that um, an influencer, someone who has an audience that they can motivate. And podcasting has truly become that, um, the, the sort of next iteration of that from an audio standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we all benefit by not just thinking about influencers as you know high reach social accounts but how do we influence our audience and really use all the tools that are available to us and i you know i think all of us agree that podcasters are are a tremendous um tremendous asset to that so let's let's dig in a little bit more you know specifically so certainly you know one of the reasons um that influencer marketing has grown so significantly, I mean, it's now a $10 billion industry, is because people simply trust other people, right? They like to hear personal experiences or anecdotes, even reviews on how a brand or service fits into their life through the context of somebody else's story. So talk to us a little bit about how podcasters have been able to supercharge personal storytelling for brands and really influence their listeners. Yeah, um, let me hop on my pedestal here. I think they're, that podcasts really are one of the last mediums where you have someone's undivided attention. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about TV, as soon as an ad comes on, it's very easy to pull out your phone. And as you're on your phone, those ads are running, you're getting Instagram ads and you're scrolling right past those. Um, and I think there's merit in those mediums and purpose, but it, you do have a bit of a divided attention. Whereas when you have podcasts, you have this audience that trusts a host and is specifically tuning in to that niche topic and that host because they trust them uh, and their opinions and the story that they have to tell. Um, and rightfully so, we've encountered a lot of different podcast hosts and running ads uh, for Pantene that are super discerning. And before they want to work with us, they have a bunch of different questions on like, okay, well, are you cruelty free? Is it safe for this type of hair? Does it work on old hair, young hair? Um, and so, it almost comes to a point if your product's right for the host, then there's an implication that it can work for the, the audience that's tuning in. Um, all of that to say podcasts have audiences that are really more receptive to brand messages and storytelling, which then en enables richer storytelling. Yeah, we, we see the same exact thing. You know, we, we're very much about um, product benefits, you know, and they're, they're dry and boring. And when you have a podcaster that has a very engaged audience and they can tell it through their lens and tell their story, it just adds a whole new level. And um, that has worked really well for us. We just, we feed just a little bit, just to, like some data or something that might be interesting. And then the podcaster takes it for us and just really tells that story and the, I'll use the word authentic way, um, but we just, that's what, what's so great about that media for us. Yeah, and we found this, um, the nature of podcasting is it's an opt-in medium, okay? And it's, so it's the, the, the listener is truly the person who says, well, I'll make this decision versus radio, which is served to them. I'll make this decision, I'll tune into this. And as they stay, engaged in this space they trust they build trust they are it could start from day one but the trust is a big word here and it trust is is runs across a number of different elements it could be that you're talking about somebody who entertains you or somebody who educates you or somebody who 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 makes you happy or sad or frustrated or whatever it may be but you trust what they say so when they lean into a product like Pantene, and they get to know what the elements of your product are, Brett, and then they tell their audience about it. That connection takes place between that person who's selected to listen to that and the the benefits of that product. And it, it really registers. It's We've, as mentioned, have worked with Sleep Number for a long time, and we have, without creating copy, 
come up with some of the best, you know, iterative language about how great that product is because the host the, the, of the podcast just loves it. And that's, that's, that's a connection that's very difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, difficult to get in any other medium. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, you know, I think it's, it's so interesting that we're having this conversation today about podcasts being such a personal medium, but you think about the two brands we have here today, hair and sleep are two of the most personal things you can think of. And so it just lends itself incredibly well to, um, to this type of, of influencer. So I think that, you know, that takes us to, um, the opportunity to talk a little bit more specifically about some of the most successful campaigns you run, you have run with influencers. So talk to us about the ones that include kind of that broad swath of influencers um, that we talked about at the beginning. So credentialers or, you know, different types of influencers, um, but also talk to us about the role that podcasters specifically played in that overall strategy. Yeah, uh, Carrie, like you said, hair is very specific and unique to every person. Um, and a lot of people believe that. I think I just proved it. My hair doesn't work with these backgrounds. Um, <laughs> so considering that and like a brand that's as widespread as Pantene, it becomes difficult to, con con uh, to convince a consumer that like your big brand is right for them and their unique hair, right? And then we also have to consider the legacy of a hair brand that's 80 years old and all of the baggage that comes with that. Um, so like back to this idea of Instagram or TV ads, you can't convincingly tell someone everything that you need to tell them to convince them from like where they are uh, in this stage of consideration. So we've run a ton of different uh, campaigns on podcasts. I think our most successful was for our collection, um, Nutrient Blends. Um, I mean, as a brand with a lot of baggage, we had to authentically overcome tons and tons of barriers. So some of them are like very ingredient specific. Uh, consumers want things that are more natural or, or more um, effective. They're also looking to avoid things like sulfates, parabens, dyes. Um, and to hear that from the brand, that comes with that baggage, it's a bit difficult to convince a consumer that's already deselected from you. Um, but when you have a podcast host be able to speak to these different things, actually experience and use the product and tell their audience about it, you can overcome a lot of these things. Um, and there's many different ways to like go into it, so many different facets of a shampoo. Um, one of our most interesting cases was using crime junkies. Uh, to talk about this nutrient blend collection. And it sounds so funny to use a, you know, a crime podcast to speak to hair, um, but it's two women that have awesome hair and their audience knows that. They have very different needs and they were able to use different collections, speak to that. And so it's not, you know, specific to the listener, um, but it's that much more relevant. Um, so that's something that's specific. And then there's also times where we tap into podcasters that have broader reach or more exciting versus uh, like very sciencey and detailed. And that helps us hit more consumers with a new exciting check this out type message. Um, so there's a plethora of different ways in which makes it a really, really exciting medium. Yeah, I love that. Um, Ashley Flowers, who's the host of Crime Junkies, is a, um, we've been in this space a long time. So I've noticed that she first started out and I, I love her. I can just see her getting completely engaged with your product and talking about attributes and features. And the, oh, it smells great! And just I can absolutely see that. So that's that's a good pickup. And who knew that true crime was going to have this reach into a young female segment? I mean, I would have never thought that, but it's it's enormous. I actually will go to a theater event pre-COVID, and three four thousand people would show up to see her. And so that's that's the kind of loyal following she's built. Anyway. So, um, uh, as mentioned, uh, Ad Results Media has worked with Sleep Never for a number of years now with Lisa, and they've gone through a number of initiatives over time. So, we were talking about the, the broad swath of influencers that exist in the podcast space. Well, um, uh, Sleep Number is the official health and wellness sleep uh, uh, wellness uh, sponsor of the NFL. Okay. 
And at least correct me if I've said that wrong, but, but anyway, that, that's the essence of it. And so we were able to utilize that swath of podcaster in order to help them go down that path. They're also health and wellness as a category is extremely important to them. And because of the breadth of podcasting, I pulled up some data today. And because podcasting so oftentimes gets the sense that, well, it's kind of new to you and there's no scale and so on and so forth to big brands. There are more than 2,008,000 podcasts active right now. Okay, effective this morning. And that's a growth of like 50,000 podcasts in the last month. So there's real scale here. So when you lean into that health and wellness category, that sleep number has said, hey, this is important to us. We want to reach these people, whether they be fitness experts or sleep experts or what have you. There's a tremendous amount of scale just in that vertical, just in that niche that we can reach into. Um, I was talking with somebody this morning and I asked them their, their fastest growing podcast on their platform, Heather Osgood at True Native Media. And she said, sleep meditations for women gets over a million downloads a month. That's a lot of people who are opting in to get that kind of content. So there's real scale in this space and it can be as targeted as you'd like. Yeah, no, absolutely. These are, these are such um, incredible examples um, of, you know, just the, the power of people being relatable. You know, I've often heard of listening to a podcast being compared to sitting in a room, listening to your friends talking you know, which was su such something so desirable during the last year. And so I think just, you know, hearing these examples really brings it to life. Um, the next question, it's, it's a funny one. Um, Marshall says niche, and I say niche. And it's always <laughs> one of those like ongoing debates about how you pronounce this word. So this next question is focused on niche or niche audiences, pick your pronunciation. Um, but one of the most notable similarities between traditional social media influencers and podcasters is that there's literally a podcast or an influencer account for every imaginable niche interest. Um, so share with us um, about how reaching audiences with these niche interests impacts your influencer marketing strategy. And then also talk to us about the role that personal relationships play in making these efforts uh, both meaningful and and long term. Yeah, um, we work extremely close with our influencers and our podcasters um, to make sure that our values and messages are truly aligned. Like, if someone doesn't believe in the things that Pantene as a brand does, um, then it's not a good match, and it's not going to resonate with the audience that they've built trust with. Um, we have a few different initiatives where we go super in depth in trying to educate our audience from like sustainability programs and where we are driving um, like conversations around closed loop packaging and a reduction of waste and energy um, that is very kind of, I mean, it's very niche to choose my side of that battle um, <laughs> to talking again about like the ingredients and the science of like why something works, why it's in, why it's out and really explaining that. Um, not everyone wants to necessarily hear and like sit and hear about those things. And so working with the right podcast, the right host, finding that niche place where your, your message is going to be um, resonant is really important. Um, we've also found spaces to talk about non-product messages. So we have um, this responsible beauty platform and a leg of that, as I mentioned earlier, is our LGBTQ platform. Um, and we speak to, you know, the role that hair plays for uh, the community. It's really fascinating. Um, for instance, 60% of people change their hair when they come out. Um, and it has an a huge impact on their identity, the way they feel they express themselves, the way that they're perceived by the world. Um, and, you know, that's not something you can really talk about in a, a Facebook post or a 15 second ad. Um, but you can have an interesting conversation um, through podcast hosts. And so these messages aren't right for all different audiences. I don't think anyone has the attention span to listen to all of that from one single hair brand, um, but it's podcasts have become the perfect way to be the right worm in the right ear 
um, right time, right place, if you will. Yeah. So we are in a golden age of digital content. Uh, and, and Marshall, the fact that you just said that there's over 2 million podcasts and 50,000 more every month, uh, that that's crazy. That And, and uh, I'm old enough to remember when cable TV came out and how we, we went from four channels to 50. And now th there's a, a channel, there's a podcast, a show for whatever interest you have. And, and Carrie, to, to the question about, about relationships, because there are so many niches, uh, I'll, be, I'll fall on that side, that also means that there is a, a tremendous community that comes with, with each show. That if you're listening to a show that interests you, you must you might have thought you may have gone your entire life thinking, oh my God, I thought I was the only person interested in X. But it turns out there's thousands, if not millions, of people that that have the same interest or at least curious in something I'm interest, interested in too. So then the relationship of that community between the listeners, but also between the host and the community is so trusted because you're sharing that, that narrow interest. Uh, and um, I think there's so much power because of that, that, that shared experience that everyone sort of found each other on the same virtual campfire. And th that community has a lot, of, uh, a lot of power when you market to them authentically. Definitely. So I, Lisa, do you have any thoughts on, you know, basically targeting niche interests um, or, you know, the role that that podcasters have been able to help really, you know, supercharge your brand in that aspect? Yeah, I mean, obviously, as we look to health and wellness as a, as a key area of focus, that's, you know, obviously we can go and target that, right? We can go target that, but everybody sleeps. You know, so even just having a broad going on to several different genres, um, we still hit those people who are interested in health and wellness. So it, it does both for us. It allows us to target more specifically, try different messages, see how that pulls through. We can track the traffic, you know, we can track it to our website, which is great. And they tell their story. Again, if they're telling you what your sleep number setting is every, every time they get on or what their sleep IQ score, there's just a little bit of that personal um, touch that again um, brings the customer and the, or the, the listener in and engages with us and tries to understand why, why is this person telling me about that? Or why are they talking about what their sleep number setting was versus their partner's sleep number setting? And why is that important? And, and so it just allows them to unpack the story for us and it allows us to then find those different audiences that um, resonate differently with different messages as well. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, the stats about the, you know, explosion of, of podcasts over the last year has just really been tremendous. And, um, you know, I, I love this discussion around people finding their, their community through media, right? So, so like, it, it, you know, it was bloggers, right? You could, or, or Tumblr communities, even you could find people who had the same wacky, obscure interests that, that you do. And, and influencers, you know, represent that beautifully. You can find, you know, a community. And I think podcasting is so interesting because it is personal and private. It's not on the internet for everybody to see, but you are part of this crew that really follows these, um, these podcasters and, and, and welcomes them kind of, you know, into your home. So it is, it's incredibly interesting. And I think, you know, um, has a great deal of potential to reach those niche, niche targets. Um, I think niche one, Marshall, but we're not counting. It did, okay, I'm trying to get from now <laughs> until uh, forever, niche. <laughs> we're not counting, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so both influencer content and podcast listenership, as, as we mentioned today, have seen a significant uptick in consumption uh, during this past year of the pandemic. So. How has this shift in consumer behavior impacted your channel planning decisions? Um, and have you seen this impact the performance of, of your media? So both from an effectiveness and an efficiency perspective. Yeah, I can chime in first. Um, yeah, I, it, it definitely has. I mean, podcasts, is, we keep on finding new ways to spend more money you know, it's all good because we're seeing great returns because, again, we can track those results 
And we don't think it's going to slow down. You know, it's going to be, it's, it's now just finding the right genres that, again, are um, authentic to our customer and, and what they're looking for. So right message to right target audience to right mindset, all of that is a trifecta with podcast. And so we, we see it as a growth opportunity for us in the audio space for sure. Um, and we'll continue to invest there as long as we're seeing a strong ROI like we are today. You know, to further the broadcasting is, is when it was first around four or five, well, it's actually more like 10 or 11 years ago when it, the first iterations of it came about. But the tech behind it was in terms of attribution and, and determining effectiveness, which was part of your question, Carrie, was, okay, so we use a media code and we ask that listener to go to the website on a, one of our DTC brands or if a retail brand like Lisa has you mentioned that you heard about it on this podcast that's a store a little bit archaic and, and certainly as not as, as clear a picture as we'd like to see but the podcast space is really modified of late to where you can now install a pixel in the rss feed of a particular podcast and a corresponding pixel without divulging any any private personal information to where you can determine what that person who downloads that podcast does when they go to your website or what have you we're even working on some tech where um, fingers crossed, we can find out if people actually go into a retail location. Uh, that's probably down the road a little bit, but the tech that's come about of late is pretty good in terms of, of showing the effectiveness of podcast advertising. And uh, comparatively speaking against what we've seen in the past, again, media codes and so on and so forth, but again, a little more of a a less modern version of attribution, it's showing a real significant increase in performance. And so our performance-minded clients are seeing great results. They're very happy with what they're seeing in the podcast space. So I think that is a, is um, it, it's like Lisa said, it's allowing her the ability to look at the data and go, uh, yeah, this is, a, this, this is a channel that we should invest in more. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know anytime there's an explosion of, of inventory and competition, it's it's great for efficiency, right? Yeah. So I think these are this is a great time to to get into the podcast advertising space. Um, okay, so we're on to our last question before we hop into the Q and A, but it's a good one. Um, so this digs into a little bit more of the the creative process. So another striking similarity between social influencer marketing and podcast advertising with host live read specifically is the need to give the creator or host a little creative flexibility to really make the message and the content their own because authenticity cannot be faked. So what is your philosophy with regard to co-creation of content and letting go of full creative control? You know, Carrie, you said authenticity can't be faked. It's also the most critical aspect. Uh, and uh, uh, Brett, you mentioned earlier on about having people having full attention uh, when they're listening to a podcast. Uh, I think what's really amazing is, uh, like Marshall, I came up through radio and love radio. Radio is, uh, is so wonderful, but also has really strict formatting that the ad breaks are this long and, and can fit in this window. With podcasting, the rules are out the window. So I've listened to podcasters spend six minutes talking about dog food, and it's not a, a pet podcast. And I've listened to that, that same podcast, have that same conversation, I think 10 different times, and it's different every time because it's, a, it's what they're feeling about, about that brand and their pets. Uh, then I also look at, at Work Life by Adam Grant, one of my favorite podcasts, and all of the, um, all of the ads are, are sponsored segments. And instead of just having a, a three minute ad break, uh, it's, a, it's part of the show that is clearly defined as sponsored and paid for, but it has that same journalistic creative spin. So um, uh, podcasts allow this really authentic, um, uh, authentic pull through that, that trades on the trust that we talked about earlier, that sense of community and that relationship that they have to be more creative and be more high impact in, in what that relationship could be. It's not just fast forwarding through a commercial or, or skipping it. Uh, you, you, you can do that or you can't, um, but, but the authenticity is, is, is unreal what you can do with, with podcast. Great. Lisa, what have you found to be successful? Yeah, sorry. 
Um, yeah, I would say for us, you know, we've had, <laughs> we have so much to say. We've had to really, really try not to just put it all in all these different talking points, you know, and, and what we found really works is like, we try to do a setup for the season or whatever, we, you know, what we want to talk about, whether it's be spring, you know, we don't, you know, whatever the season is, then we'll want to make sure that they hit on some of the feature benefits of the benefits of, you know, why sleep number and why the sleep number of smart bed. Um, but then we give fun facts, you know, data that we get so that they have some fun with it. Like, hey, we're sleeping better in Minnesota than they are in Michigan or whatever the data point is. And then they play around with it and then they have a dialogue too. So Mike, to your point, it goes on and on and on. So it's not 30 seconds, 60 seconds. It goes just, it allows them to just really have fun with the brand. And again, that just builds that confidence and trust um, that it's a, you know, it's a brand that I want to aspire to. So that's, that's how we've been using it. Great. Yeah, to um, radio, is it, you, you copy points and you write copy. We, we try and generate copy for our clients in a very conversational fashion because we are embarking on a journey with that personality to discuss with their audience what they're doing. Podcasting is a little different because it's podcasting. It's all opt-in. Um, and sometimes the content is, um, uh, uh, it can be a little bit spicier just because they, you never know what they're going to talk about. Dax Shepard's a prime example. Love Dax. Okay. Dax is a very honest guy, very transparent. I think why that's why he's successful. But Dax can use a few, you know, colorful terms. And um, so we we have to, you know, we guide him there. This is this is where the guides, these are where the out-of-bounds markers are. Let's make sure we stay within the out-of-bounds markers. And we try and do that with every one of the shows that we work with. And we're probably we probably are, you know, in a few thousand shows on a weekly basis here. So it's it, we're very conscientious about what our brands that we work with want, where their out of bounds markers are, and how to, you know, Brett, you mentioned that you actually had talked to a number of these people. That's sort of mandatory from our book standpoint to try and connect them directly so that we can give them those out of bounds markers, but still say, have fun with it, enjoy it, tell people how you really feel about this because that's the connection we're looking for. Um, that that you, you, Mr. Podcaster, you have an audience that likes you and trusts you and laughs with you or cries with you or whatever it may be. Tell them about this product that you've discovered that's great, that'll make their lives better. And that's why we see these great these kind of performance metrics that we have. It's, um, this is um, it's a special space here. Yeah, no, it, it really is. And I think, um, you know, whether they are traditional, regular social influencers or, or celebs or, or podcasting podcasters, being able to brief within a flexible framework. So it's just, as you said, you know, what are your key messages? What are your absolute mandatories? Um, but really just giving the personality, um, the creative freedom to, to make it their own and, and make sure you're, you're picking the right partners, right? Like don't ask somebody to not be themselves. Um, so if you don't like colorful language, you know, maybe go find a different pod podcast partner. Um, it's all good. It's all good. So, um, you know, I want to thank you guys so much. It would, this was, I think a really great, um, great lively, uh, panel. I hope everyone else ag agrees. I actually see the Q and a widget here populating with some really interesting questions. Um, so if we want to kind of switch over to the, the Q and a portion of the portion of the show. Um, I'll just go through and kind of ask some of the key questions of, of the audience and, you know, whoever wants to, to answer the specific question, just, just pop in. So the first one I thought was great. Um, what are your thoughts on how mainstream influencer marketing differs from podcasts in terms of the feeling of intrusion? I can take that one. Um, I think if you're looking at um, influencers on, say, like Instagram or TikTok, a lot of times I feel like consumers are following them for a, a particular, one particular thing, and it varies. Following them for their style or the way their hair looks or the travels that they do, um, but it's that one particular thing. And then if you throw Breeze in, to use a PNG example, Febreze, with a travel influencer, it can it, it's more likely to feel a bit weird and um, I think intrusive was the word they used. 
mm -hmm. the question. Whereas podcasters, you're tuning in to hear their opinion and their storytelling about whatever topic. Um, and I feel like when you use a podcaster versus other mediums, um, you're opting in to hear their opinion and the way they story tell about a particular brand, um, even if it's a little out of the category like hair and crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hair and crime, I love that. Um, we, you know, we, we ask for the, a process where the, we let the personality be the host of the show use that in their own context. So we ask them to weave it into the content. And, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes they, they, they do, frankly, they're pretty creative. They're, they're already good talkers in the first place. So the ability to weave it into content is pretty good. And, you know, we've got, um, uh, since we do a lot of those empty bars in the court, which is a large podcast. Oh, hey, we're Marshall. Not, yeah, we're, I think your, your audio is kind of going in and out a little bit. Huh. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. We can hear you now. Okay, great. Sorry about that. It's the uh, um, I'm in Texas, and the guy picks today to come cut the yard outside our building. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, so it's probably picking up that that static in the background. I'm trying to keep it out of the out of the way here. Anyway, we've got uh, we do a lot of business with Molson Coors as a brand. And uh, also Barstool Sports, you can obviously see the, the symmetry between that audience and Molson Coors products. But the way it's woven into content, uh, the way the teams there at, at Barstool Sports weave it into their various content or what have you, it's, it's, it's really magical. And that's, the, that's where the, there's no interruption. Brett, like you said, there's no real contextual interruption there. It's, it's very fluid. And I, it's, um, you know, it's, it, I, I, it's a wonderful medium that allows us to be <clears throat> fluid in the style of advertising we're in. Yeah. Uh, no. One one more point on that. It's the difference between passive versus active that um, when you're following, when you're scrolling through Instagram, like you've opted in to follow people except for, for the, the ads that, that you're being served, but you're just sort of scrolling through and you're like, I wonder who's next on the feed, uh, which still has immense power and, and is a huge part of the marketing mix podcasts you are you are opting in not just to subscribe to the show to download the episode and then to make the investment of your time to listen to to that episode uh, so you're in a different headspace uh, when you're listening to a podcast and, and um, probably at a different way a different um, level of being ready to absorb different information yeah no it, it's such a good point and I, I sympathize with your ambient noise Marshall I, I live in Brooklyn and I'm surprised at how well Brooklyn has behaved today without the sirens. I feel like I'm constantly putting myself on mute. Um, okay, so let's dig into the next question. I think this is another great one. How do you engage with large podcast personalities and their often active audience throughout the partnership? So if it's not just a one and done, right? How do you continue to this momentum and, and how do you potentially kind of re-engage re or continue to activate their audience? Well, I can, I can jump in on that one. So for us, you know, it, we're constantly trying to feed new information so it doesn't get stale, you know, because it is, you're right, the, you know, the audience will get pretty tired of it pretty quickly. So it's constantly refreshing. And we, we, we have those personal conversations with the podcasters too, just to kind of talk about what we're trying to um, get across, talk about anything new at Sleep Number, try to get them excited about it, and they sleep on our product. So you can kind of have that dialogue with it, with them about it too, so they get some excitement about it. But it really is about keeping their, um, what they talk about fresh and exciting. Great. Excellent. Anyone? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that constant, I think it's important you stay in touch with them, and 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 it's important that you you feed them innovation. Sleep Number's done a great job of innovating over the course of years. We've got some of our personalities of Sleep Number that have been on, you know, ten years or so, and so but and so talking about sleeping on the same bed for ten years is going to be boring. But what they've done, and we provide this information, is continue to update um, with new innovations that Sleep Number has. They've got a Sleep IQ product, which is an app-based program on the phone that keeps track of how well you sleep. 
we, we update them on, on any kind of iterations that take place relative to new uh, uh, product lines that come out and that kind of thing. It just keeps things fresh. Keep Because you, if it's one and done, that's one thing. But if you're doing this over the course of time, and you should be because it's an ever-expanding audio space, um, you've got to continue to update that. Brad, I'm sure you do the same with new products, new innovations, packaging changes, the whole smash. I'm sure that's that's part of your lexicon. Yeah, we, we take a very similar approach uh, to how Lisa was describing it. We try to pull in more people behind the brand uh, to engage with the podcasters. We have our scientists, um, our different communications people, our different designers come in and speak to them uh, and give them interesting information because the product changes, but only so often. But we have so much information, just years and years of science, constantly engaging consumers, learning really interesting insights. That's part of why people tune into podcasts to learn, to hear something new. Um, and so we want to help provide that from like a brand lens as well. Yeah. If I had a dollar for every time somebody's like, guess what I learned in this podcast yesterday, you know, it, it is, it's like the, it's like, I don't know if it's like going back to school for, for grownups, but um, it is such, such an interesting medium and, and everybody learns something new. Um, so another question here, more, you know, this is more generally about how even to get started, um, is that does podcasting have a high or low barrier to entry? And, you know, I think we can discuss this from a cost perspective, from a creative development perspective, from, you know, measurement, um, you know, what is, what is your opinion on, on kind of getting started? I'll take a quick uh, show on the strategic side and I'll turn it over to the much smarter panelists to talk through the activation of, of the pull through. I think um, podcasting and work with influencers let you go places that you can't go as a brand yourself. Uh, and I think you're, you're renting or leasing the access to that audience and hopefully building a long-term relationship to reach those people in a targeted, uh, I think we even said effective and efficient way. So I think strategically, it makes a lot of sense to go with, with podcasts. Uh, I would say creating your own podcast, there, there's a, a mess of them out there already, uh, but there, there may be a niche that, uh, that your brand hasn't, uh, can talk to authentically through an owned podcast that, that hasn't been out there yet. But in terms of the, the marketing side, I'll, I'll turn it over to everyone else. Um, barrier to entry if from a content standpoint, it's still relatively low. Um, you know, the original podcasters could do it in their garage with a laptop. It's a little more sophisticated than that now and to produce high quality stuff with background music, et cetera. It's a little more, a little more expensive, but you can buy podcast starter kits for a few hundred dollars. Um, so that content side, uh, is, is the, to build a network takes time, takes energy, takes social media presence, uh, because that's truly, uh, you know, connective tissue with other podcasters is also important. Uh, to get to scale, um, so it's not it's not a, not a heavy lift. It's um, obviously with the the level of growth in the space, like fifty thousand new podcasts in the last four or five weeks, plenty of people entering the space, and you never know who's going to be the next, what the next uh, uh, segment is. I mean, true crime. Nobody saw that two years ago. Now Ashley Flowers has got a, an industry built around it now at Crime Junkies. So. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's such an interesting time to to be able to structure some tests and learns too. I think that's you know one of the best ways as a marketer to really um, embrace a, a new channel is you know have a very focused objective. Like, what do you want to accomplish? What are your testing parameters? And then um, you know execute that that first campaign with with podcasting. To, to then decide, you know, is this going to be a real workhouse, workhorse channel for you that you're going to want to invest in further? So it's absolutely, you can um, kind of, you know, start small and, and learn along the way and, and really refine your strategy. Right. Um, yeah, and I would just, I, Marshall, I could add in too, like for sleep number, you know, obviously we want them sleeping on our beds. So there's an investment, you know, where, you know, we'll, they'll be sleeping on our beds and we want to give them time to experience it. But there are certain times during the year, like during the holiday season and things like that, where we will like send pillows, you know, something that's less just to get them experience and, and get in closer to the brand. 
Um, so just those type of things are super, those super touch, high touch things make a difference in how they tell your story. But yeah, so you can do it in a bunch of different ways and you can look at it seasonally. You can look at it for the long run. There's lots of different ways of um, getting into the space. Right. From an advertising standpoint, it's still pretty affordable. I mean, the CPMs are still relatively low um, and inventory available. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's at scale that, that, that two years ago people said, oh, there's no scale there. But now, I mean, I think uh, from a monthly active users, it's bigger than all the social media platforms uh, except for Facebook. Podcasting actually has more active monthly users than Twitter, Instagram, the, the, the whole smash and growing fast. So, yeah, the, right, the, I've, got to, I've got to cut it all out. I'm getting the, the move from my team here. So, uh, Lisa, Marshall, Brett, Mike, Carrie, thank you all. This was an awesome session. I think we're two away from having like the full like tic tac toe board here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very impressive, <laughs> Carrie. You, you definitely maneuvered through all of this. So, uh, thank you so much for bringing everyone to the table and thank you all for participating today. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Great yeah. panel. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Well, we're at our second to last panel of the day, um, but we are um, we are turning it up. We are, are just making it better and better. Um, I am now thrilled to introduce a very special guest. We are joined by Ali Webb, the founder of Dry Bar. She's a multi-time entrepreneur. Uh, she has a new company called Beckett and Quill, and also has a very cool massage company called.